What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity on the Hermitcraft server. So with this wavering armor, when you're sneaking, which I'm doing right now, I'm sneaking, you like sneak really fast. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Like you're almost running. Uh, you have the, like the same speed you'd be running without the armor when you're sneaking with the armor on. I don't know. I think that's crazy. Anyway, uh, welcome back guys. I made myself a new hammer. So this hammer right here has got a cobalt head. It's got a manulin rod. And it's got two... Uh, paper plates on it, right? So what's cool about this is I was able to actually put a redstone flux capacitor on there. You see this one's got 2 million RF, whereas like my shovel only has 400,000. It's got a hardened flux capacitor. So yeah, you can put the higher tier ones on these weapons. It's based on the tool durability. So this tool has uh, an effective durability of 8,000, but the actual durability, I think that's what it goes off of, is 6,400 because of that manulin uh, rod. Uh, so yeah, with the more durability, you can put the higher tier flux capacitors on there. So I was kind of looking to make a tool that had uh, a lot of speed, that had soak touch. And yeah, so I ended up making this little guy right here, and I was just testing it out, and I could in fact put the redstone flux capacitor on there, which is good, because those things charge a lot faster than the hardened ones. So yeah, um, this is my new... <laughs> Nether quartz gathering tool, and I was using it, and I gathered a decent amount of nether quartz now, so we're stocked back up on this stuff, uh, which is good. Uh, oh yeah, there's more quartz up here too. Got a lot of quartz now. So yeah, we're stocked up on that stuff. Now the reason why we need that is because the laboratory blocks that we're building with in our, in our base require that. It's like one for every eight blocks. But you can also use that to increase um, the sharpness of a sword. So yeah, you need a lot of quartz for that. Also, I was looking, we need Tesseracts. And I was looking at the recipes for Tesseracts, and you could do this with the Thermal Expansion recipe. Uh, let's see, it's this one, Hardened Glass, and that is like eight pulverized obsidian. Yeah, this recipe right here. Eight pulverized obsidian plus a lead ingot gives you two hardened glass, which I guess is all right. But you can also use uh, the Ender IO fused quartz, which is well, it's four nether quartz gets you one of these, and four of those gets you um, a tesseract, basically. So we don't have to worry about pulverizing obsidian and taking lead. We can just use nether quartz, and I think that's probably a much better way of doing it, especially since quartz is pretty easy to get, and we have a whole lot of it. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go crazy here. Whoops. Give me my sword back. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy here, and I'm just going to put in a whole bunch of... Oh, you know what? I think we have to switch this to all smelting. I think that's what we have to do. And that should make us some fused quartz, right? Wait a second. Why did that only make one? Hold on. Let's watch this go again. Okay. Uh, now we got four... Not sure. Oh, you know what happened? Okay, so I clicked the first stack in there and it started smelting immediately and then I clicked the other two in there. So it only made that one because it started with one. Now it's making three at a time. Okay, that had me confused for a second. I was like, did I just lose a bunch of quartz? Okay, so we can go ahead and take this. Actually, I'm going to wait for one more recipe so we can make ourselves two tesseracts. Give me. Okay, very good. So yeah, we're going to make ourselves a couple of tesseracts here. So what else do we need for this stuff? We need... Oh, the Enderium ingots, of course we do. So we need to make all of this stuff. So this is Pyruthium dust, which is sulfur. You can get this in the nether. There's nether sulfur available. I think I also have that IC2 sulfur right here. Um, let's see, what else do you need for that? Uh, blaze powder, which we have because of D-Max Blaze Farm. Redstone we got plenty of, and pulverized coal, which if we don't have any, we can go ahead and just pulverize some. That's not a big deal. Uh, Ender Pearls we have plenty of, and Enderium Base. Okay, so this is new. This is Ender I.O. Wait, what? Hold on a second. Okay, so an Enderium Blend <laughs> and the Pyruthium Dust will do that. So Enderium Blend is pulverized shiny metal and some tin. Maybe we will go the Ender I.O. Ender I.O. route. Oh no, that still requires shiny metal as well. Hmm. Is there a way we can get this cheaper? Now, it looks like those are the only two recipes that we have available. So either way, it's Pyruthium Dust, and then it's two Ender Pearls plus this, in, this uh, Enderium Base. So Shiny Ingots. How many of those do we have? Uh, that's Blizz Powder, Blizz Powder. Uh, we have two Shiny Ingots. That is not very much. Now, you get 
this stuff I think is a byproduct of pulverizing ferris. Oh man. Um let me check in my chest here. <laughs> Do we have any we have a bunch of ferris and I think I've been smelting that. I haven't been pulverizing it, which is a huge mistake. Okay, so that is a problem. Yeah, we don't have very much shiny metal. I wonder if there's an easier way to get this stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, shiny ore. Okay, if we have that enabled, I think there's nether platinum ore. Okay, so that might be a possibility. I might go to the nether looking for that. Uh, what was this one? Extra bees. So bees can make this. That's good. Yeah, the platinum. The nether platinum. Um, yeah, the ferrous ore. Whoops. This is the way you normally click this, especially at the beginning of the game. Uh, ferrous ore uh, gives you a 10% chance of the shiny metal. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I tell you what, I'm going to go to the nether. I'm going to use my cobalt hammer. <laughs> Internet's working much better today. So yeah, I'm going to go to the nether. I'm going to go try and find some nether platinum ore. It should be fairly easy to find that. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a blue tinted ore. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and find that stuff, and we will be right back, guys. Goodness, guys, so I was in the nether, and I was scouring around for a long time, probably 30 to 45 minutes looking for stuff. I was... Pretty much looking specifically for the platinum ore, and I was unable to find any, but I did find four nether diamond ore, which is pretty rare. But yeah, no nether platinum ore. Uh, so I did come across some nether ferrous ore, which is good. This is almost the same thing. We can take this stuff, and if we smelt it, I believe it turns into uh, ferrous ore. Then we can pulverize that and try and get the shiny metal that way. Let's see. Yeah, that turns into two ferrous ores. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to smelt this stuff down. We'll have just about a full stack of the ferrous ore. And I'll take that. We will pulverize it. Hopefully we'll get some shiny metal out of it. And yeah. Okay, so let me do this and we'll be back, guys. All right. So I got all of the ferrous metal pulverized and we ended up getting six more ingots we have a total of eight now so that's pretty good so we're back uh, to making this tesseract and i think we're going to go with this recipe just because it's a little bit easier we don't have to wor worry about uh melting down ender pearls we don't have to worry about pulverizing tin and silver things like this uh so we're going to go with this recipe here so we need this uh enderium base so that's shiny ingot silver ingot and two tin so we're going to do this eight times so we need 16 tin and eight silver so what do we got here there's some silver let's get eight of that and ten 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 where are we at oh, we only got ten of this let's grab a little bit more i'm sure we got some in this uh it's a different type of ten let's just grab 16 like that we'll stick this in here okay so we need to put this into here let's see ten oh you know what i put the wrong thing away didn't i <laughs> Uh, let's look at this once again. So it was 10 silver, 10 silver and shiny. And I think I just put the silver away instead of the 10. And I think I only got seven of those instead of eight. There we go. Okay. I think we should be good now. So this, this, that, is that going to do what we want? Oh yeah. Okay. So that's making our enderium base. That's exactly what we need. And then we take that. And we put that with an ender pearl, right? And pyrothium dust. So I went ahead and I made up a bunch of pyrothium. Uh, got 30 of it here, so that should be pretty good. So we're going to need some ender pearls. Don't really know how many we're going to need here. But I think I'm going to try and turn all of this into what we need. Is it just like that? Was there another material? Man, I've looked at this how many times now and I still can't remember what we need. Let's see. Oh, it's also this guy right there. Okay, so this is going to take a long time. So let's go ahead and make another cut until this is done, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys. So this is still going, but I've collected eight Enderium ingots so far, so we should be able to get going what we need done. Uh, so we need to get ourselves, I think, two diamonds. Let's go ahead and grab that. Uh, so, yeah, we need to make this recipe here. Okay, so let's click on the crafting table and look at this, and there's two of those. All right, so now we need to take these frames and fill them up with liquid ender. So we'll use the fluid transposer again. I'm going to have to run some cables over to these guys, and I need to actually switch this. Um, is 
it orange? Yeah, I think it's orange. Okay, so we need to switch it like that. These guys are full of power now. Where you're just trying to get some ender pearls in there. So I believe it is... Oh, jeez, that is not good. I need to grab some of these ender pearls before we're out. <laughs> I believe it's four ender pearls equal one bucket, and we need two total buckets. So I'm going to have to go farming some endermen again. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and melt up these ender pearls in the magma crucible. That's going to come over here. Uh, once we get a thousand millibuckets, I do believe it's going to start filling up one of our, yeah, Tesseract frames. Okay, so once we get the full Tesseract frame, what do we have to do to convert that into a Tesseract? Well, we need a little bit of Tinker's Alloy, which I believe is bronze. Yes, it is. And then some silver. So we just need to wrap that all together. Let's get our first one here. Nice. Okay, so we need some bronze and some silver. I don't think I have bronze in there. Bronze, bronze, energetic copper, aluminum brass. Uh, oh, okay, so we're low on bronze. So that's copper and tin. We're, oh my goodness. Can we get applied energistics up already? Because I am tired of this. Okay, so let's do copper and tin. Double click so it's yellow, so we can highlight our items here. Um... It appears I don't have tin in there. So there's some tin. Okay. So I believe it is three copper and tin like that. All right. So we'll do the forestry recipe for some bronze. Very good. Okay. So now we have bronze. Let's go ahead and get rid of the copper and tin out of any eye. We don't need that anymore. Uh, so it was silver. Nope. I still don't have silver, do I? Silver. All right. So there is our first Tesseract. That seemed like it's a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. Uh, there's another frame. We'll go ahead and do that same thing over here. It looks like my internet's starting to lag a little bit. Hopefully it'll hold out better than it did yesterday, which was kind of ridiculous. All right, so there we go. There is two Tesseracts. So now that we have those guys, we can come over here to our Miscraft world base. Uh, we can... I just got turned around. <laughs> we can go ahead and come over to our big reactor here, which is really big. Um, I did put a power tap on here. I know I didn't do that at the end of the last episode. Sorry about that. Um, I think we need to look in this one. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so we will wrench that off here. So now what we need to do is just put a Tesseract right there. Right, so let's right click on it. Oh, looks like Corrales has a public channel. Uh, can we do these private or do we have to... Oh, you know what? Okay, yeah, that's right. This was changed. Before in a previous version of <laughs> Thermal Expansion, all you had to do is make the Tesseract and you could just right click on it and say it's private. But now, yeah, I remember there was a second recipe here. So yeah, we take a Tesseract with a Signalum and that'll make it so we can make it private so we need to make some of this stuff as well so how do you make this so it's copper silver and redstone and an alloy smelter so that's not bad i think i'm gonna go ahead and make some of this i'm gonna make both of our tesseracts able to be private yep and we'll be right back guys all right guys so i went ahead and they got that all sorted so these things now say access on them on the tooltip here which means they can be set to private or public so we just go ahead and right click on this guy uh get out of here information tooltip yeah now we got the little lock thing so now we can say restricted owner only or public i think restricted means like there's some kind of a friends list you can allow people to do it we want private we only want ourselves to be able to mess with these things uh so configuration we can say we want items and stuff like that uh, we don't want fluids, we don't I want items, we only want to send power. So we'll go ahead and label this channel 1. We'll say main base power. And click the save frequency and we'll turn it on. Okay, so now channel 1 is sending power that we have stored in our big reactor. So anywhere we put down this other Tesseract, uh, we set this thing to private, owner only. Our main base power comes on. Uh, we can go ahead and block all these other things because we don't care about them and we want to receive energy So we'll go ahead and turn that on so the power from there now exists over here 
Right. So we can go ahead and put this guy here. And for instance, we could charge this thing up wirelessly if we wanted to. Um, is that? Yeah, that's drawing power. Uh, this bar is being filled up from the power over there. Yep, everything's all happy. <laughs> very good, very good. So now we have power everywhere. I also installed a chunk loader right here. Uh, this is just a crafting table, some gold, and an ender pearl. This will keep things loaded when I'm not in this dimension anymore. So if we show the lasers, uh, you can see I just don't have that much loaded. I think that is a total of 25 chunks. It's like pretty small square area here. Uh, just enough to keep our big reactor loaded and just a little bit of this other stuff. We'll have some things here in a little bit. Uh, so yeah, 25 chunks, not that bad. I think when a player loads in, I think it's over 81 chunks, like a 9x9 nine nine area. So yeah, this is very small footprint. Okay, so we'll hide those lasers. Now we have power everywhere, so we can actually take this back to the overworld with us if we wanted to and put power wherever we need it. Um, so let's see. I think the next thing I wanted to do was try and set up a very, very basic applied energistic system. Um, I want to be able to have all of my stuff in one location easily searchable. So in order to do any of this stuff, let's start looking at applied energistic. Applied energistics. All right. So, oh, that's right, that's right. So in order to do this, we gotta do meteor finding and things like that. We're probably not quite to the applied energistic stage just yet. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, so yeah, we need an inscriber. We need a bunch of these things. Oh my goodness. Okay, I tell you guys what. Let me go through this real quick, get myself refamiliarized. Oh, you can make stairs out of this stuff. Yeah, let me get myself refamiliarized with what we need to do here, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I'm getting myself refamiliarized with Applied Energistics. It's been a little bit of time. I haven't really used AE2 that much. I use it kind of in Mod Sauce a little bit, but that's been months. Uh, so, yeah, we have to make ourselves an inscriber. This guy right here, uh, this is how we make the circuits and things like that. I believe you can also copy other people's press plate things, whatever those are called, using the inscriber. Anyway... So that uses two sticky pistons, a little bit of iron, and we need a Fluex crystal. So you make this by dropping one charge, Certus Quartz, plus one Nether Quartz, plus a Redstone Dust, into a puddle of water. Aha. Uh -huh. So the charge Certus Quartz... I think I'm going to do two at a time. Uh, charge Certus Quartz, regular Certus Quartz, and then I think it's a two Nether Quartz. And we'll do this. So we need some water. I don't have a water bucket on me for some reason, which is really weird. Normally I do. Okay, there it is. Okay, so there's our water bucket. Um, I don't think there's a spot in this base really where we can put down water. Oh, well, I guess we could just do it right here in our pool. Sure, let's do this actually. Okay, so Certus Quartz, Charge Quartz, and Nether Quartz. And those guys all interact with each other. And they'll combine into the Fluex, right? Maybe? Did I do that right? Does it have to be like a one by one puddle? Can it not be like... I'm not sure now. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this one more time. So, oh, you know what? It was redstone, wasn't it? Okay, not... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. We got two redstone on us. I think this will work. I think it'll be able to recognize what's going on here. There we go. Unnatural. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. We got some Fluix. We didn't need the regular Certus Quartz. Right. So now that we have that, we should be able to make our Inscriber, which is just some iron and sticky pistons. So we can go ahead and do that. Perfect. So let's set this guy down real quick. What does this look like? Right. So I believe you have to put in a press here and some materials and things happen and all of this stuff. It's all good. Um, so the next step is we need to actually get ourselves, hmm, where are they? Are they not shown here? They should be shown here somewhere. There's a couple of different plates that we need. I really am not seeing them. Is it these things? Inscriber Calculation Press. So yeah, uh, you can duplicate these things in an inscriber. Wait, is that what we just made? Yeah, we, okay, so we need to get the press. We can put in a block of iron and we'll duplicate those. So I believe Corrales said that he had all four of the different types. So what I might do is go over to Corrales' base and copy those. We got plenty of iron to copy it with. 
So yeah, I'm gonna go do that, try and get the four of the different presses we need, and we'll be back. Alright, so I went over to Corrales' base. He didn't have all of them. He only had two different types. He has this Inscriber Silicon Press, and he has this Inscriber Logic Press. Uh, so I just went ahead and I uh, copied an Inscriber Silicon Press, but I want to show you guys how I have it set up right now. Um, so I just have my Tesseract next to an Energy Acceptor. Um, the Energy Acceptor really wasn't that bad to make, so it's four iron, four quartz glass, and one of these Fluix Crystals, which we already made. The quartz glass... You just pulverize up some nether quartz and four pieces of glass. Pretty easy, pretty easy. Okay, and then, yeah, that gives this thing power. So all we got to do is just put in a block of iron here and put in the other and the other press we need. I guess the logic press. So that'll do its thing. A little progress bar goes up and copied. Perfect. Okay, so I need to go return these two back to Corralis' base. And we need to get the other two items, uh, the other two presses. So yeah, I wasn't seeing these before, but there's an Inscriber Calculation Press, an Inscriber Engineering Press, an Inscriber Silicon Press, and an Inscriber Logic Press. And I also saw there's an Inscriber Name an Inscriber Name Press. I'm not sure what that is used for. I think that might be new <laughs> since the last time I used this. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, so yep, I'm going to go ahead and return those back to Corrales, and we will be back, guys. Alright guys, so I just asked if anybody else on the server had uh, the engineering and the in the calculation press, and Michael said he did. Michael is uh, playing on the server, he was on the Minecraft server, or I guess he is a part of Minecraft actually, but he's playing with us as a guest. Uh, so yeah, he just made these things up for me. Oh, thank you. I'm going to give you iron back, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. Awesome. So now we should have all the different types of our presses that we need. Awkward. Okay, I'm going to bust out of here before things get weird. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, he's over here. Let's actually look at the mini-map. He is right here. That was his base that we were just at. And the spawn town is over here. So he's just a couple volumes away. Uh, not too far. You just go, what is that, southwest over to his base? Yep. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, uh, yeah, those are those two Natura trees. Those are really awesome. I think, yeah, wasn't it Unleashed that I built a base in one of those? I like that. That was pretty cool. I think he was living in one of those at the start, and then he expanded out into that base he currently is at. Uh, this is Slipgator's base. Uh, Joe Hills is right over here, just kind of doing a tour now for no reason. Uh, that's XB's base. DMAC is right over this side, and, of course, I'm right here. Okay, so now we have all those presses. We should be able to make all the different parts that we need. Uh, but yeah, the next thing is that it's going to take a bunch of time. <laughs> okay. Uh, so for instance, we want to make an ME drive. We need to make these engineering processors. They used to be called advanced processors, I think, back in AE1. Yeah, a lot of this stuff has changed. Uh, so we need printed silicon, which you get from the inscriber silicon press with silicon makes these. So we're going to have to make a whole bunch of these. I think silicon's using basically everything. Uh, then we need the printed engineering circuit, which we need the inscriber engineering press with a diamond. Sorry, he's on the phone. Okay. Uh, to make these, and yeah, you combine them all together. Basically, if you want to automate this whole process, you need like four of these things set up. And <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a while before we get to that point. I just want to have basic stuff set up. Like if we could just get a small little drive going... Which I don't even know if we're going to be able to do today. I think I'm going to have to do most of this stuff off camera, to be honest. Uh, where are the storage drives? Man, I am not seeing them. Oh, they're right down here. Okay, so an ME storage drive requires uh, quartz glass, which we saw some redstone. And this ME 1K storage component, which is just some sort of quartz redstone. And this one, so this is uh, silicon and that. Mm hmm. Okay. So that isn't too bad. How do we make the silicon? It looks like something we're going to need a whole bunch of. So we're going to need a sag mill. Interesting. We need Ender I.O. to actually make applied energistic stuff. Okay, got it. Uh, so clay looks like it's probably going to be the best way to get that. That's an 80% chance for two of them. Let's see what else. Uh, sand, that's a 50% chance, 50% chance. And the redstone is an 80% chance. Okay, so we need a sag mill clay. So clay is the next thing we 
need to do. We got a little bit here, so we should be able to get a bunch of that stuff. Uh, so I'm going to make a sag mill. I'm going to start making clay. I'm going to start making silicon. We'll be back. Oh goodness, guys, I completely forgot how much crafting is involved in applied energistics. So I've been spending the last, I don't know, half an hour here crafting things up. I made an ME terminal. I made some ME glass cable, the Fluix stuff. I made the ME drive. I made 60s ME uh, 1K storage cells. Ah, well, we got the base ME system going here. We have access to the stuff. There's no stuff in here. But now we can put stuff in there and have access to it, which is awesome. So I can put all my applied energistic stuff that I have in here, clean up my inventory. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I think, like I said, I'm probably going to be doing most of this stuff off camera. It's a lot of crafting. It's a lot of the same things over and over and over again. Waiting for things. We have to make things like um, the pure Certus Quartz crystals. So if we look at these. So we're supposed to drop a Certus Quartz seed made from Certus Quartz dust and sand in a puddle of water. Uh, that takes about, I think it was like 20 minutes for that to grow unless you have these, uh, growth accelerator things. Uh, so that's yet even more crafting to get this going. Uh, so like I said, I'm probably gonna be doing most of this stuff off camera. We've done a lot of crafting in today's episode. In fact, I think we've reached the end of it for today, guys. I'm very happy we have at least this set up. So now I can start putting all my stuff in here. Granted, it's not a lot of space. But we'll have access to all of my stuff in one spot, and that'll be nice instead of having to go through all these different chests and things like that. But yeah, guys, that's it for this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity. I hope you guys liked it. I know there was a lot of crafting. Please bear with me. Uh, it'll go a lot faster here in the future when our Applied Energistics is fully set up and all of that stuff. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.